Church Kids, it's Emma, and I'm so excited that you're here with us today. We're going to be talking about something really important today, okay? The title of today's little talk, today's Kids Church, is called People Matter. People matter to God, and so people should matter to us. Well, I have a story for you today, but before we get into that, I have a question for you. Question of the week, are you ready? Have you ever been lost before? One of the scariest things in the world is when you get lost from your home or your family. I will never forget when I was a little girl, my family took us to Canada's Wonderland and I had gotten an iPod that year. And so I had so many games on my iPod and I loved them. They were so much fun. And so my family was walking ahead of me and because I kept looking down playing my game, when I finally looked up to see where they were, I couldn't find them anywhere. <gasps> Church kids, my heart was racing. I started sweating. I was freaking out. I was like, oh no, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna get kidnapped by aliens or I'm gonna have to live in Canada's Wonderland for the rest of my life and eat hot dogs. <sighs> I was so scared because I was lost without my family. And Jesus tells a similar story in the New Testament. Jesus was speaking to a huge crowd of people. And in this crowd, there were two groups. There was one group that was the religious leaders. And they were a little bit snobby. And they kind of thought that they were better than everybody else. And then there was a second group of people that were kind of like the, the sinners or the outcasts. Everyone is a sinner. But um, these people specifically felt outcasted by the religious people. And so they actually felt like, Jesus, I don't deserve your love. I don't deserve God. I don't deserve a relationship with him. Look at all the things that I've done wrong. And so Jesus loves both of these groups of people, and he wants to bring them together in a story in something we call unity. So let's get into it. Luke 15, 3 to 6 says this. Then Jesus told them this story. Suppose one of you has 100 sheep, but he loses one of them. Then he will leave the other 99 sheep alone to go out and look for the one lost sheep. The man will keep on searching for the lost sheep until he finds it. And when he finds it, the man is very happy. He puts it on his shoulders and he goes home. He calls all of his friends and neighbors and says, Be happy with me because I found my lost sheep. Wow, there's a lot happening in this story. And do you want to know why it's so special? Because it tells us what God thinks about people. Jesus is the shepherd. And if he loses one sheep in Canada's Wonderland named Emma or Leo or Sylvia or Charlotte, he leaves the other 99 sheep to go all over the amusement park and find the one sheep that went missing. Every single sheep matters to God. Not one single person is unloved or unvalued by God. He loves all of us. Now, I'm sure I know what some of you are thinking. You're probably like, Emma, he leaves 99 sheep alone? Like my babysitter can't even leave two of my siblings alone without them getting into trouble or going missing or something, you know? And you're probably thinking, doesn't he care if the 99 sheep run away? That doesn't make a lot of sense, Jesus. You're going to leave 99 sheep to go find one? What about if those ones run away? But this is because there's something really interesting about sheep, okay? A herd of sheep, of 99 sheep, is actually safe because there's power, there's strength in numbers. So if a wolf comes walking by and he's thinking, ooh, I want to eat one of those sheep for lunch, he's going to look at that massive herd of sheep and be like... I bet you there's a shepherd somewhere in there. There's too many sheep. I, mm, eat. nope, bad idea. But if a wolf is walking through the forest and sees one single sheep by itself, looking all tasty, it's lunchtime. There is no animal in the entire world that strays more easily than sheep. And did you know that there is also no animal in the entire world that is so incapable of finding its way home. Sheep are dumb. They do not have very good instincts. And so this sheep is not going to find its way back to the flock. It's doomed, okay? And that's why there's no way that it could survive if Jesus, the shepherd, 
didn't take action to go and save it. And so the first time that you ever entered into best friendship with Jesus, that was the first time that he found you. But because we're like sheep, we kind of wander off sometimes, right? Many times when we feel deeply hurt and upset and far from God, he goes and searches for us again. He knows that we're like sheep. He knows that we're going to wander off. But Jesus is a good shepherd. He doesn't give up on us. He comes and finds us again and again and again and again. Why does he do that? Because God cares for you and he loves you and he's not going to stop fighting every single battle and climbing every single mountain to get to you. He's a good shepherd because he loves, 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 loves you. And do you remember what the verse said when he found the sheep? He put it over his shoulder and he carried it the rest of the way home. Do you know what happened to me in Canada's Wonderland? Well, I didn't get abducted by aliens and I didn't have to live in Canada's Wonderland for the rest of my life and eat hot dogs. The truth is, I did the one thing that you are never supposed to do when you get lost. I started panicking. I started running all over the amusement park. I went to the main entrance. I went down to the big roller coasters. I went to the water park. I was looking everywhere. But you know what you're actually supposed to do? If you ever get lost, you're supposed to stay where you are so that your mommy and daddy can retrace their steps and find you. But I started going to every single roller coaster and saying, are you my family? Are you my family? Nope, next one. And by this time, I was really lost. And I had felt like there's no way they're going to find me now. And I was on the verge of tears. And then I heard my dad say, Emma? And I was like, phew! Thank goodness you found me. I am never going to play that stupid game again. Or at least for the rest of the day. And my dad, he picked me up and he brought me back to my family. And my mom came running over and she was like, Emma, we were worried sick. Where did you go? Oh my gosh, we missed you. And my siblings were like, you're annoying 90% of the time, but I'm glad you didn't have to live here for the rest of your life. And so why would I tell you this extremely traumatic story? Because when Jesus finds us, he carries us home. And Romans 5, 6 says, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and he died for us sinners. Church kids, Jesus did all of that because people matter so much to him. He was willing to do whatever it takes to save us when we wander off. And just as Jesus goes after you, he goes after the people in your life. He goes after your family. He goes after your friends at school. He goes after your neighbors. He even goes after the people you don't really like. Jesus didn't say, I'm only going to go after all the best sheep who do all the right things and obey all my rules and are the best Christians. No, that's not what it says at all. Jesus loves everyone. He goes after everyone despite what they do. Have you ever lost something that you really love? Maybe it was like a stuffy or a toy or something you really love. And so you start tearing the house apart looking for it. I mean, your bedroom is a disaster. You're flipping everything looking for, for this toy. And when you find it, you go, Mom, yes, I found it. Look, 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 I found it. And you're so excited. And you can't believe that you found it. And there's just utter joy and, and satisfaction. Thank goodness I found my toy. And you're just like the happiest person on the planet right now. And you're so excited that you found what you lost. And Jesus is the same way. He is so joyful and excited when he finds us. His most valuable treasure, us, has been spiritually found. And did you know that there's only one type of you on this earth that has ever, ever existed in the thousands of years that this earth has been around, there's only one you. That's it. One. One. It's you. And so church kids, there's three 
things that I want you to take away from today's message, okay? Number one, you matter to God. Each one of you has a special relationship with God. You were created by him. And so we can cry with God. We can celebrate with God. We can talk to him when we're upset. We can talk to him when we're at home, when we're on the school bus, when we're out with our friends. We can talk to God anytime, anywhere, because we matter. And number two is that people matter to God. Jesus didn't just come and die for you. He died for everyone. God is so awesome that he created the deserts, the snow, the mountains, the trees, the jungles, all of it, the sunshine, the moon. He created everything. But his greatest treasure and possession is us. Isn't that crazy? It's so special. Number three, and this is the last point that I want you to take away, okay? People matter to me. Not me. I mean, like, you point to yourself, like you. Like, people matter to you and to me. See what I'm saying? Even when people really upset me, I can choose to remember, you know what? God really, really loves this person. And you know what's really cool is that when we become best friends with God, we kind of get invited into this really big family of all the other people that also love God and have been found. And so in this family, God said to you, I'm going to give you a brand new name. And I want you to walk around and this is your new name, okay? Pretend you have a little name tag. And the name is Peacemaker. God calls us to be peacemakers and to help people so that everywhere we go, we can remember I'm a peacemaker and I'm going to look for people to help because they matter to God. And so at school, when you see somebody that's sitting by themselves, you can ask them to come and sit with you. Or when you have a friend that's really upset, you can pray with them. And if you have a friend group that's like kind of picking on someone or maybe not being very nice, you can just say, hey guys, let's not do that. Let's be nice to each other, okay? A peacemaker is someone who includes, loves, and helps other people because they understand how much people matter to God. So church kids, as you go into this next week, remember, you matter to God. People matter to God, and people matter to me. That's all we got for today. Love you guys. We'll see you later.